Hi, kids! You didn't sound ready for that one. You didn't sound prepared. I think I was very prepared, actually. I disagree. I'm sat here with a coffee, got my... Hang on. I've got my pyjamas on, slippers on. I am very ready, Tom. I'm prepared today. What well, do you Well, as soon bring? as we started this podcast, it sounds like all the fireworks are now coming out from outside my house. See, so they're happy prepared Diwali, as well. Everyone. Happy Diwali. They're prepared. The last they're, day. They're um, letting off all of the fireworks but, um, for oops, us. Sorry, I should, I should have done what you, you did. Yeah, so I'm sure. here. I have my apple juice. Yep. I have my ripped jeans on with socks with pandas and donuts. <laughs> and a lemon t-shirt. A lemon t-shirt. So all in all, more than ready. There we go. More than prepared. See, do you know what what concerns me though about your attire and what you're wearing today, which which um kind of goes hand in hand with what we're talking about today, is I really don't understand people that sit around their houses in jeans, jeans and I, I'm gonna judge you for that. Why would oh. you choose to wear jeans right now when nobody can see you from the waist down? Because I like to wear jeans. I like jeans. That's the thing. Okay. I'm actually quite comfortable in jeans. We had this conversation with my old, with our old housemate when we lived with him. He never wore jeans. Ever. Just full stop. And especially when at mm. home. Mm. But I like jeans. I like being in jeans. I feel comfortable in my jeans. My jeans are stretchy. So stretchy jeans. They're, they're, stretchy aren't jeans. they jeggings then? Well, no, they're jeans. They just have a little bit of stretch. Mm. Right. Mm. So, they, they stretchy. Interesting. See, I I'm going to sit for the whole podcast. Oh, lovely. Very um, casual, laid back look you're going for. Yeah, lovely. Stretch back. Yeah, lean back on that chair, Tom. I don't think I could. I don't no. think. I, yeah, it looks comfy for about two seconds. Not even that. It was really actually super uncomfortable. <laughs> I regretted it from day dot. But um, yeah, I quite like jeans, especially at home. Do you feel like more put together in, in a jean? Um, I just don't. I can't reasonably buy joggers and stuff when I don't actually wear them. What do you mean? Um, so I don't do exercise to warrant having joggers or tracksuit bottoms. Do you think I run in my tracksuit bottoms? Absolutely I have no not. idea what you do in your tracksuit bottoms, but I, I wouldn't leave the house wearing them. No, well, sometimes, So you what's know. the point of me spending £30, £40 on them? Because you live in them, see? I live right. in my jeans and I will go out in them. Yeah. I don't know if I get a phone call say, hey, Tom, do you want to come out in 10 minutes? I'm like, absolutely, I'm already wearing jeans. It, yeah, but it takes two seconds to switch out in from your joggers into your jeans. Do you know what takes even less? <laughs> Being in your jeans. One nil, Tom, <laughs> taking the lead. Let's go, boys. I just don't think um, I could sit around in jeans. I think I'd rather take the extra time getting changed out of my joggers into jeans, especially during lockdown. Who's going to be especially. asking you to go out at the moment? I'm living in <sighs> jeans. Don't know. And you know, in, in leggings, not jeans. <laughs> I have one pair of jogger type trousers. They're called loungewear. Lounge- and they've got Ooh, bananas fancy. on them. And they are pretty sick. Yeah, all right. Maybe but, for your um, birthday or Christmas even, I should buy you just, a pair of joggers and we'll convert you. We'll, oh we'll, show you, we'll take you over to the dark side, show you how we live. Just, and I'll be like, yeah, do you know what? I'll just carry on wearing jeans. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'm a big je- I've, I left the house today. Good, well done. So I wore jeans <laughs> to leave the house in. Proud of you. So am I, to be honest. Yeah, Doing big stuff. over here. Big moves, Tom. Anyway, how, how's the rest of your week been? midday. Wow, congratulations. Has that been it? <laughs> That's been my whole day, to be honest. Um, it also wasn't for anything reasonable. I decided I want a cake this morning. Nice. So at 10 in the morning, I walked down to the coffee shop. Bought cakes for the family and then came home. That was really cute. What cake was it? This isn't. I got a chocolate be... fudge cake. Okay, that's a good choice. I was again uh, going to judge you on your cake choice. I got choice. for my for my father. I got him a honey cake thing. Mhm. Nice. It was gluten free, so I was like, "That'll do." Mhm. And for my madre, I got her a bakewell tart. Interesting. And neither of them, well, your dad's probably out of the equation because he is gluten-free cake mm. man. Um, ne- cake, your, man. Y- cake man. Your mum didn't go, mm, I'd rather the chocolate fudge cake because that is no. far superior than cherry bakewell. She, she likes a bakewell tart. Yeah, 
Well, each to their own, so. you know. Each to their own, exactly. Who am I yeah. to judge? Yeah. But Who yeah, my you? week, my week's been fine. Been busy. Mm-hmm. Feels very busy. This week's gone very quickly and I'm happy it's gone so quickly. I think everyone feels like that. I feel like um, although lockdown has come about, I think everyone's just keeping their head in the sand and just getting on with mm. their stuff, you know? Just getting on no, with it. Today, today's been the first day where I've got nothing planned, so I was just in bed, just at home. That's nice. It is nice to a point until you go... There's nothing to do. <laughs> there is actually like, nothing to do. Is it nearly bedtime? Should I go to bed at four in the afternoon literally i was racking my, my brains of what to do today and all i I managed to do the two things that we're allowed to do go for a walk and nice. i discovered on my way to the walk that mcdonald's drive throughs are still open so obviously so walk, the height through. of my day the height of my week i no, i, I drove through we drove okay. to the walk and then we um had a mcdonald's drive through on the way back and it was nice. amazing we even sat in the car park and ate it you know do you want to know how snobby i what? I don't like McDonald's anymore. Get out. No, you did not just I, say that to us. You did not say know, that to me and the kids. I've kind, I've kind of gone off um, fast food recently. Sorry. Like I'll, still have, I'll still have something like Chinese food and that's take out. That's not really it's not Please really tell me food. you still like Domino's. I still like Domino's, but I don't oh see that as fast god. food. I see like Burger King, KFC, McDonald's. Oh my god, Tom! I just, I've just really gone off it recently. Is that bad? Are you still in there, Tom? Can I, I we hope reach so. you? I don't know. I've become an adult, Anna. 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 Anna I've become <laughs> an adult. And I, think, <laughs> I think someone's hijacked Tom. He's not there think, at the moment. <laughs> I think I'm broken. I think today's the day where we realise I've fully just lost it. Okay, but, well, um, yeah, I I'm think... I'm slowly becoming an adult, Anya. And an adult? <laughs> I don't think so, Tom. Do you know what? I've had a great day. Um, we're going to wrap this one short because <laughs> words have become difficult for me in my old age. I think um, before we do, Tom, you need to tell us your I'm an adult but so you can okay. fully redeem yourself from the sins you've just told us. <laughs> so I, I, So now we're on video. Mm-hmm. I often feel... Um, so always when we're doing I'm an adult but, I feel a bit awkward because... If you look at me now in my lemon t-shirt and socks with pandas and donuts, nothing about me screams, hey, that guy's an adult over there. <laughs> so I, I shouldn't have to have the whole premise of I'm an adult, but because nothing about me looks like an adult. Mm-hmm. But now if I do my I'm an adult well, we get two plugs. We get two plugs all in one go so it doesn't look like we're whoring out our, our um, socials. Mm-hmm. So... If you follow us on Instagram at We Are Audio Box, I put up on our story um, a, a, an item that I bought mm-hmm. to celebrate the launch of our new podcast, Urge to Splurge. Two plugs. Thank you very much. I bought some shoes with smiley faces on them. Wow. That's my I'm an adult butt. I bought bright yellow slip on shoes. With smiley faces on them. And they match and the yellow greatest... top. <gasps> this is a fit. But um, you don't need these when you're an adult because you're meant to be doing business things and grown up things. But I now have shoes with smiley faces on them. Mm. And that's why I'm an adult. But I also spent too much money on for some canvas slip on shoes. But that's why I'm an adult this week, Anya. What is yours? Well, firstly, I just have to say, I don't know why you're spending money on smiley face shoes, but not joggers. I think you're making the wrong choices there, Tom. Because I wear shoes every day. Smiley face shoes. I'd rather wear joggers every day than smiley face shoes. Oh, disagree. (laughs) Disagree. You know, you can't wear joggers. You can't wear joggers to a wedding. You can wear smiley face shoes to a wedding. Can you? Could you not? Well, you could wear both to a wedding. They're, they're coming after you now. Can you, you hear them some... shouting? Is that cats? It's, it's children. children. What are children it's, doing now? S- screaming right. outside of my, my my room. How rude. But anyway, mm. we'll, we'll agree to disagree, Tom. My... No, we won't. You'll have to concede and go, actually, Tom, you're right. Smiley face shoes better than joggers. We'll have to do a poll on our Instagram yeah. and okay. we'll, we'll let the kids figure it out for us. Okay, yeah. But um, my I'm an adult but for this week is I have drunk out of this mug all week and I'm not mad at oh. it. It says... But why... you've washed it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just okay, been cool. my chosen mug for the week. And do you do you ever go into your like mug cupboard? I think everyone has mugged, a mug cupboard. That's what we call it. A mugged. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> everyone yeah. has a mugged. Everyone's just, got a mugged. Just a cupboard full of mugs. A mugged. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. And just like one mug speaks to you more than the rest. Mm-hmm. And this is the mug that's been speaking to me. So it says, "Why be moody when you can shake your booty?" No. <laughs> and I made this answer. mug. You um, made it. Of my very self, my bare hands, um, back a you couple of years ago. You foraged the clay. I foraged the clay, um, ruined my nails. <laughs> oh, Devo. <laughs> no, I just painted it. Um, oh. But I painted it back a few years ago, and I haven't drunk out of it for ages. It's been at the back of the mugged all week. And then I looked into the mugged, and I thought, you know, I, need, I really need something that's going to spark some joy. And this one has been my shining beacon for the whole week. So, so you painted yeah. it? Can I hold up to the camera it. again? It's got little peaches on it. Did you, you paint the peaches? Booty. Yeah. And That's it's really it, good. The, the writing's not very good. It says, yeah, why it's it's mostly peaches? good. It's better than my handwriting. Thank, thank you, Tom. I had yes. to handwrite a note to someone at work the other day and I was really embarrassed to give it to them. Why? What does it say? Because my handwriting's tragic. Why did you have to give someone a note? You four? Well, yes. You in primary but, um, school? Like, they, were on, the they were on the phone. They were on the phone and I was just like, it's easier to just give them a note rather than emailing them. Interesting. So I wrote them a note and I was like, these etchings on this piece of paper are just absolute nonsense. <laughs> Did you put a little smiley I, face at the end? I, no, I didn't. <laughs> I handed it to her and she went, what? And I was like, just just read it. Just read it. <laughs> but and she couldn't. <laughs> no, of course not. So I, I don't know if she did what she needed to do. But the point is, my handwriting's tragic. Well, maybe we should paint some mugs together and I'll teach you how to write better, Tom. I've gone to... I haven't. I've painted a plate before mm. and a bowl. I painted mm. a bowl. It's good fun. Do you know, I think I might try and do more painting, more painting <laughs> do you know mugs. I think I might just do more. <laughs> just do more in general. I'm just going to stop there. I'm just an adult, more. but I need to do more. <laughs> oh, you and I both, Anya. You and I both. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's difficult being an adult. Tom, Anya. this week we are chatting all about... Do you want to say or shall I... I'll let you say because it's normally your thing. It is, but I thought I'd share the microphone this week because you know sharing is caring. But nah, if, if be if a mic you... hog. Okay, go well, on. You know, you know, I love to be a mic hog. We are talking about first impressions. <gasps> how how do you think you do in first impressions? I just don't really think into it that much until this week late. when oh. we well yeah until it's too yeah i don't think you really think about going into a first impression until you've done the first impression and it's usually when it goes bad then you start mm. overthinking like i want to say balls is that bad word balls, balls. <laughs> Should I no, think of balls. sugar honey iced tea why nice. did i just say that you know you know mm. i think you know um but Tom, i do how do you do it first? I don't think you do very well in first impression. First of all, <laughs> hurtful. Straight off the bat, I'm insulted. Yeah, but just um, it's just your thing, isn't it, to be awkward around people? <laughs> I, yeah, I am very, I am very awkward, and every time, so you you get a handful of um, first impressions, like when you start school, start uni, secondary school, first job, second job, last job, however many jobs you get, you always get a first impression. And work-wise, I make a good impression to the team, yeah. but never to management. And that's where I think I get right. my why is mixed up. Management often see me as... So when I start a new job, like most people when you start a new job, you're a bit shy, you're a bit timid, you haven't, you don't really know the role, so you don't go in just like shouting your mouth off and being all confident. Mm-hmm. So management instantly hate that you're not confident. Mm. All right, you write off. But um, other people would like see you as oh, I remember being in that position not that long ago and take you under their wing and then that's nice. We like those become people. Become pals with them. They're but, good ex. Um, yeah, management often see me as a oh he's a bit oh, don't trust him. It's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, but then yeah. I just think that that's not everyone. You know that no, it's that's not just everyone. some it's, people. It's just a lot of the places I've worked at. Which is why I think first impressions are so difficult. Like, there's no one rule fits everyone yeah is that the yeah um sorry a link just came up saying something about clean food but we'll continue Um, we're still recording yeah we are still recording 
Um, there's, is it no shoe fits all? I don't know. What? You know what I mean. As in like... One size fits all. One, no. And that's for like hats. Well, yeah. But yeah. Anyway, one... Do you think that's weird, that one size fits all in hats? Like yeah. Like you and I would have the same head size. Well, no, because there's like little cl- um, clippy things at the back, isn't it? Like toggles. What if you have a really small head? Buy a child's hat. <laughs> Isn't that what people do? Like, if you've got small no feet, you buy children's shoes. I don't wear hats very often. No. Tom, I want to know, what was your first impression of me? I don't remember. You don't remember? Uh, great, I made a great first yeah, impression. Really. Christ almighty. And first of all, it was about <laughs> six years ago. Five, but okay. Okay. Was it? Was yes. it six? Five. We started uni five years ago. Yes. It's Didn't 2020 we? and we started in 2015. Okay, so it's I'll been a roughly five years, two months. Oh, yeah, have <laughs> I didn't have it. But um, I can't remember five years ago. That's awful. You can't remember. Not even like just not the first time you met me, but like some of your fir- first thoughts about me. Because we weren't friends for like the first two years of uni really first five years since <laughs> uni um <laughs> so my first, i have I, I simply just i think you were quite confident and that's that's about it that's it that's, that's it I, I really and i'm so sorry i can't remember you in the first time <laughs> no. i don't I know whether that's a me a me thing and we should be it's a you thing. It's or a if you that's a you thing. make more of a first impression what do i have to do oh fireworks they're beautiful outside though but um what do you have to do to make a a good first impression or just to be memorable well i don't think you introduced yourself to me granted i didn't didn't introduce myself to you these fireworks are great by the way they look spectacular (laughs) should we wait a minute for the audio (laughs) describe them for us tom i'll just film them okay this is what we're getting all right, well, whilst you're doing that, I'm going to have some coffee. No. I can't believe you couldn't remember me. How fucking rude. Really? Is that a surprise to you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that a surprise? Do you remember the first time you said that? Well, leave it, leave it. Burn. There is so many fireworks. Yeah, well, they'll stop. Fireworks are expensive. They're not going to keep going. I think they've stopped. <laughs> you think? I do think. I promise. Well, they stopped for the time being. They stopped for the time being. (laughs) What were you saying? Should we continue with podcast? Let's continue. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I don't really remember you. I think you have to introduce. I don't think you came up to me and said, "Hi, I'm Anya." No, but like, not all first impressions have to be like a one-on-one. It could be like I think that helps me specifically narrow it down. It really. This is like really eye-opening to the type of person that you are. Like. You don't, I'm completely oblivious to oblivious the outside to world. If it's not like right in front of me saying, Tom, you need to do this. Tom, you need to see this person. <laughs> don't don't know. What I don't know doesn't hurt me. Yeah. So that's that's the life I live. Either you're oblivious or you just like to keep yourself to yourself. So you just don't really like Either look into other really people. Either really innocent or super duper aggressive. Or you're just a poo. Yeah. So that's super <laughs> aggressive. Either I'm very dismissive of just strangers, or I'm naive. But I wasn't innocent. a stranger. I was in your class you were for on like my first day. You were three a years. Yeah, but I mean, like, as in the first few months of us That's being at uni asked. together. You said okay, well, first I'm impression. Re- I had no idea what it was. I'm but now re- that you've phrasing. opened up the question a bit broader, mm-hmm. um, you were quite a goody two shoes. Which isn't a shock to anyone. That's not a shock. Come on. Come on. This is not a, a goody surprise. Shoe to shoes to who? A goody shoe shoes. A shoe shoe shoes. A goody two shoes to the lecturer or yes. everyone. Okay, lecturer. fine. I wanted to do well. There's nothing wrong with that. Why are you a nerd? Get out of here. <laughs> not on my podcast. <laughs> but um, yeah, you're a very goody two shoes. A um, confident goody two shoes. That's the worst. You did keep yourself to yourself, though, to be fair. Mm. There was there was you and another girl who became friends quite quick. And she you, left you, me. <laughs> you, you, you formed your own clique. And then that was it. Mm. And that was a done deal. And then I 
didn't really interact with you for the rest of the no, three years didn't. until I had to. Has your opinion changed of me? So, nope. Like, were your, were your first impressions correct? That was spot were you on. bang on? <laughs> spot on. If you're not in Anya's clique, she doesn't care about you. Oh, uh, wow. She's goody two shoes and she's very confident. That's spot on, actually, with my impression, first impression. I do care about people outside. Oh, my clique, lies. Just not as much. <laughs> just lies. Well, how can you care about people that you don't really know? It's called empathy. <laughs> It's called empathy, Anya, where you just accept everyone as they are. I wasn't horrible to you. I just didn't really socialise with you. <laughs> you mad at me for that. You got me mad at I'm me for that. I'm not mad at you. I wasn't mean. I just didn't pay you attention. I think you're needy. <laughs> oh, massively. Massively. <laughs> okay, well, my first impression of you, Tom. Oh, good. Um, you... This is going to make me cry. <laughs> You were really quiet when I first spoke to you. Um, I don't know whether it's because you It's just... the whole confidence thing about first starting somewhere. <laughs> Maybe you were intimidated by my confidence. Um... Maybe you didn't approach me, so I didn't, I didn't give you any I did approach kind of you. Day. We crossed you did not. The... We've been through this. What, this conversation? You didn't approach me. Well, I think I did. say, hi, I'm Anya. Well, I had a conversation with you and you weren't interested... And I didn't know whether it was because you were shy or whether you just didn't care. <laughs> it was just Probably shy. What was it really about? Was it... general small talk about the lecture. We were walking into uni together. I just bumped into you and I was like, oh, Tom. And you were like, oh, weirdo. <laughs> and then just... Did didn't... I have to take my headphones out? Did I go... Probably, yeah. Yeah, you were like, oh, I really wish I didn't catch her eye. <laughs> was, I my t- was I on my phone? Oh, my God, guys, that weird girl from uni is talking to me. <laughs> Help, 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 confident help, help. goody two shoes. <laughs> Would it be weird if I got an Uber this far to uni? <laughs> um, n- no, you could have. I might have been like, tired. That against you, yeah. I might have been tired. Um, Either way, you just weren't really. Um, might not have cared. You weren't that in engaged in the conversation, and I didn't know whether it's because you were really shy, didn't care for the conversation. Any other reasons? Maybe you didn't like me. Didn't rate you. Yeah. Didn't rate me. I just remember that and I was like, oh, really? And maybe that's why, Tom, I didn't invite you into my clique. I gave you the oh, opportunity. That was, it could have been me, you and this other girl in your clique. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, you're lucky because my my um, thoughts on you have changed since. And oh, I, nice. For the worst. For the worst. I now think you're an absolute... <laughs> You'd be right. Um... Oh, the fireworks are back again, Joy. I now think you are confident. I think mm-hmm. you're you're very self-assured. I wouldn't say you're an extrovert. You're just if you ch- if if you won't put yourself out there that mm. much in conversations. But when somebody invites you in a conversation, or whether you want to engage in a conversation, you're not shy mm. at all in the slightest. So I think going back to my first impression of you you just, just did rude. not care for the conversation <laughs> for whatever reason i'm actually quite a nice person but um, you have you to are. you have to gauge my inter- my interest first just wear smiley face shoes and yeah, he'll be all in help. or yeah. lemon t-shirts just anything fun clothes wise i'm like you know what? pals there we go should have should but, have done um, that i didn't know you were i do, I, I get that a lot i think i, I think i'm quite shy from the jump the jump. But yeah, so when I first meet someone, I'd be like a bit hesitant. Don't start talking about Space Jam from the get go. <laughs> Probably reel best. them in. <laughs> Normal conversation, adult conversation. Hey, have you watched Space Jam? No, and then you dip. That's that's how. <laughs> that's how I make first impressions. I think. Mm, interesting. Um, so, but this this newest job, the new the job I'm in now, mm-hmm. was probably my f- first impression that was hardest to land if that makes sense mm. because it's, it's a it's a big radio company that i work for and obviously when you've studied radio for the past three years you want to work in the industry you don't really care for the station but you want to work in that industry so you want to make a good first impression with everyone there mm-hmm. so you don't don't make the next years awkward or whatever but um it's a political station and i know nothing about politics so it was a difficult first impression when they're like, oh, so where do you stand on this issue? And I'm like, I didn't know that was an issue. Or what's I your impression on this politician? I'm like, mm, are they too bad? Are they too good? I don't know. What did you do? So, did you just lie and go, yeah, I think they're, I think they're awful? Yeah, I played off their reactions is what I did a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. So people 
in the company probably don't quite know where I stand on a lot of moral issues <laughs> because I've said whatever they wanted to hear. Good stuff. So if if they ever go, oh, Tom, join this debate about this thing, I'm like, oh, no. I think both of them know something different. And they both think I agree with them. Oh, dear. So that's, that's the issue I've had. So first impression, quite difficult, especially when starting a new job because... Mm-hmm. you haven't grown up with them and that's the other thing is my friendship group that I grew up with are complete idiots hence how I've turned out this way but people in at work are smart people mm-hmm. and very often adults you're saying your friends aren't smart and they're not adults yeah, yeah. 100% mm-hmm. yeah. 100% and you don't turn out like this when you hang out with smart intellectuals okay mm-hmm. mm. well Tom um I want to know, how important do you think it is to make a good first impression? Ooh, I think... I think undersell yourself when you're first meeting someone. What? Why? I think I think if you come across too confident and cocky, people will write you off. Is that why you wrote if, me off? If you come... Yeah. Yeah. If you come across a little nervous, a little shy, it's like, oh, I've been in that position. It's, it's, I think it's how it interacts with you so i came in quite nervous quite shy mm-hmm. but then when someone else starts quite nervous and quite shy i'm like i was there two years ago i was there last year whatever when i started my new job oh, blah 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 blah. it's easier for me to interact with that person rather than someone coming and going yo this is what's happening i'm now here doing this that and the other yeah that's annoying i agree and i'm like he's just got here I'm absolutely not taking any advice from what this kid's shouting at me. Yeah. Interesting. Like even if even if he was my senior mm-hmm. or she, I wouldn't um I wouldn't like someone to come in so confident and be like, You're doing this, you're doing that. Yeah. You need to ease in, you need to power your way in and then find your footing. So do you think, what I think do you think first impressions are important then? Like, do you think they have a lasting do impression th- on people? I think first impressions are very important, yes. Really? Interesting. I do. do you not? I mean, I think they're important in terms of being able to connect with somebody and for that for them to want to sustain a relationship with you in any capacity like whether that's a job interview like if you don't make a good first impression you're not going to get the job or if I'm making friends with someone for the first time and I'm a horrible person they're not going to want to be friends with me so it's it's important different settings yeah it's important to make first impressions it's interesting though because we get told like not to judge a book by its cover yet Mm. we're so fascinated or not fascinated but we're so we're so intent on making a good first impression. It's like, why do I need to make a good first impression when usually your first impression is like an exaggerated version of you yeah. or if you're trying to be confident or it's like um, just one one side of your personality. Because I think we've spoken about before how you're a different person around different people. Like you're going to be a different person in work than you are yeah, to your family, have. than you are to your friends. So like... Hmm. It's interesting, like, making a first impression. It's not really the real you. It's just one no, version of you or an no. exaggerated version of yourself. So I don't know. Like, I think first impressions are important, but I don't think they're the be-all or end-all of sustaining a relationship, you mm. know? So you think you build upon first impression, you have your first impression, and then you keep constantly building on it. At what point does it become a second first impression? Like you meet second someone once. Let's say you meet someone once. Yeah. And you see them again nine months later. Yeah. Would you feel like you've got to reintroduce yourself? Or would you just assume they remembered you? Depends, doesn't it? So if, if I got to somebody and go, oh, hi, Julia. And she's like, oh, let's say, hey, let's you. Say and doesn't remember birthday. my name. It's my yeah. birthday. And I've got friends around because it's not COVID-19 yeah <laughs> and you see my friends and you make your first impression blah 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 blah. then you don't see them again for another year yeah would you then go oh hi I'm Anya or would you be like oh hey you would you remember first of all would you remember them depends how good of a first impression they <laughs> okay, made on me and would you feel like you need to say hi I'm Anya I'm Tom's mate or would you just assume they remember you it depends. I think it depends. Thing. I don't know. I think it depends how like they greet you. Like, 
I don't, I don't know. It depends. It very much depends. On, like if I walk into a room and they look at me and go, "Oh hi," like then it's like, "Oh hi, yeah, how are you? How are you doing?" Whilst if I walk into a room and they're like, "That was Bertie just moving over, grumbling." Um, Come on! I thought it was a car outside my house. <laughs> no, it's him. Um, if if I walk into a room and they look up and they're like, "Oh." Do you, want, do you want a drink? I'll be like, oh, yeah. No, yeah, I don't, my name's Anya. I met last year. <laughs> I don't know. Do you want a drink? Hi, I'm, my name's Anya. Okay. It's been so long since I socialised. <laughs> oh, I can't remember. You're going to Costas. Oh, what, what do you want? Um, uh, Anya is my name. Okay. You want a drink or... This is the thing. Like, it's so hard. How do you make first impressions over Zoom? That's another thing. Like, now we're oh, all God, meeting I'd online. First I'd impressions really on, like, texting people, you know? Like, um, dating sites at the moment. Imagine having your first even at the date moment, as a Zoom date. No. I know people that have, during all of this, had their first date as a Zoom date. And they decided to do a Zoom quiz as their first date. Strong, but bad. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> bad. And now they're still dating. They're still going out. Oh, congrats! They live around the corner yet? from each other now. Yeah, they've both moved out of their um, family homes. They've moved in together. They've not moved in together. They've both no. moved to the same area with their fr- separate friends. Um, but yeah, they're still very much dating. So interesting. Maybe f- first date. What's very first much dating soon? and dating? Huh? Very much What's dating. What's very much dating and well, dating? <laughs> no, they're just committed to the dating life. They're very much dating. <laughs> I don't know. You I say words to make you sound like you know what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know what I'm what saying. Um, well, I I wanted to go through a few um, a few things, Tom, about making first impressions because I I just find it interesting. How do how do people gauge a first impression? Like, why did I think you were really shy, other than the fact that you weren't speaking? Why did you think I was really confident? And what are those like? Because you were speaking. Yeah, yeah, probably. Well, but you see when you meet somebody for the first time and they don't, you don't say anything to them, but you just kind of like analyse them. Like, what is it that's ticking in your head that makes these assumptions of this of this person? Because did you know you make a first impression in a tenth of a second? A tenth of a second. That's how long it they takes say you. They can tell if you have an attraction to someone in the first six. The first six seconds? That's mad. See, you what do you look if, for? if you're attracted to someone or not. What do you look for? They like, have a face. They have a face. It's a good start. They've got one of these. <laughs> I'm on board. It's interesting. Well, I guess it's different for everyone. Like, um, everybody's got different things that turn them on in a person, mm. attracted to different things. But I think it takes a lot more for me than just a face. I guess it's not a face. It's it's a it's a. Um... If they didn't have a face. Would that be a deal breaker or not a deal breaker? <laughs> Probably a deal breaker. Yeah, I think you need a face. You know, talking and mm. breathing and just generally living, nah. eating. Nah. You're overhyping it. <laughs> but I need more than just um, looks for me to be attracted to that stuff. I think a lot of people do, but I guess yeah. that first initial attraction is going to be taken off looks. And it's okay, the same. Okay, would an accent. Sorry, we're going to completely derail okay, your, let's go. your tangent structure. Time. Here we go. Would an accent turn you off of a person? Mm-hmm. It would. That's wild. Would it not you? No. So if somebody came in with a really annoying LA accent, you wouldn't be like, because you've and, got to remember, and we you got have to on really well. <laughs> and we get on really well, and they have a face. But they've got an annoying accent. I think yeah. I'd be able to look past the accent. What, because you can see their face? How narrow-minded well, of you? I also said because we got on really well. <laughs> and you specified the face thing. Yeah, but you have to listen to that voice for the rest of your life. But I think you'd be able to tune it out if you found that they were, like, the one. I'm you'd sorry, but to... no, no. I you think you could. Not... Could you imagine if you told yes. your guy mates, I find this girl mm. really attractive... Uh, mm. We get on so well, like seen space jam. all the time. Seen Space yeah. Jam. However, her accent's annoying. But lads, I think I can get past it if I just tune her I out. Think you I'm know- sorry if she so- heard that conversation. If she heard you say, <laughs> I think I, I, I can tune her out. I think you'd notice it. I think you'd be able to see past it. Maybe you know, falling in love is a a whole other ballpark. I think you probably do put a lot of things like settle for a lot of things um 
that's what I mean. Always like, settle. You, oh, settling, <laughs> tuning out. These are the things you don't want to be saying <laughs> in your relationship. I tune out very regularly. <laughs> Yeah, to be um, fair, you do. You're not very good, are people. you? I'm not. No, I'm a bad person. <laughs> but um, I turn up. What's your? You've got to give me. You've got to. Give, I turn up. You do turn up. But I, I wanted to know before we move off this tangent. Yeah. What is your most hated accent? Ooh. The Scouse accent's quite hard. Really? I really like the Scouse accent. It's probably one of my favourite British accents. That's uncommon. Yeah, I, yeah, I have heard that. that I do really like uncommon. it. I, I, I would listen to somebody... Do you ever... I'd listen to them. I wouldn't go, I'm not listening to you. <laughs> Move away from Liverpool for five years. What I meant by that is, do you ever hear an accent that you're really in awe of and or you could literally just sit there and like listen to them talking all day? Like I love the Irish yeah, accent. Yeah, keep going. Yes, see... I think I've said this before in one of our episodes, but I, I really would like my mum to be Irish or like her grandma to be Irish because I just think I could sit there Pierce. and it's just, it's so like melodic and soothing. I think mm. I just sit there and just feel like at peace, you know, the Speak Irish accent. I, I really like the Irish accent. I think it's nice. <laughs> it's it sounds nice, nice on men because it's a bit deeper. It's all nice. It's all nice. We like we nice. like the Irish. Mm. Um. Anyway, back to where i was going with this so what was your least was that oh um, do you want to know um <laughs> no and i don't care move on <laughs> forget your side just ask me i the don't questions. love i don't love a rush a russian accent it's probably okay. one of my least favorite because it sounds quite rough it's quite harsh hmm. um and people say the same about german accent I don't mind a German accent it's it's a russian accent where i don't, I know. don't think i've met many germans if you know Mm. We'll have to ship you over there and you can meet some more. Ship me over there? Could I not fly? <laughs> you can fly. I could be you shipped. <laughs> Crated. <laughs> Parcel forced over. Can't wait. Can't well, wait. One day we'll go skiing in Germany. You're skiing in Germany? I don't think anyone skis in Germany. Austria. That's right Austria next door. Can... We'll ski in Austria okay. and then we'll, we'll, we'll hop ski on to... over. We'll ski to. Germany. We'll, <laughs> we'll go down the Alps straight into Germany. You can ski, I think, through Austria to Switzerland. Or maybe that's okay, France. Okay, but we're not trying to get to Switzerland. <laughs> we can we can say lots of things here. Well, we could just walk from this place to the next, but it's not where we want to go. No, it's not. We're not allowed to at the moment. So this we is could kind drive of a to Scotland, dream. Anya. <laughs> so it's got nothing to do with this conversation, but we could do it. <laughs> anywhere right now. Take me anywhere out of these four walls and I'll be happy. <laughs> It's a non-essential journey. It is. We shouldn't really be going. Anyway, Tom, back to first impressions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, uh, these are three things that psychologists say um, we use to make our first impressions in that tenth of a second on a person. So, are you ready? Right. The first one is familiarity. So we tend to judge people on their faces, obviously. But oh. <laughs> we look So they need a face. <laughs> Tommy Boy's not looking so dumb over here now, is he? You look yeah. further into it. Um, if somebody looks like a person that's already in our life, we tend to judge that person in like and compare them to the person that we already know. So say so for example, negative. it could be negative. Like you could I don't know, have a high school bully that you really dislike for obvious reasons. And right. then this person walks up to you, they're a total stranger, have never been in your life before, but they really look like that high school bully. And you're like, mm, negative feelings, like already mm. not, not liking you. <laughs> yeah. Which is That's not how I took it. it. I thought, what I thought you meant was like, um, let's say I've got four friends mm. and I, I meet another person who looks like one of these four friends. Yeah. Would I negatively associate that to them and be like, oh, this guy wants to be James, but he's just not James? Well, no, because this... Would I be like, I can't guy... be friends with this kid because he looks too much like James. Yeah, but then would you... I can't would have you... two Jameses in my life. Yeah, but he's not called James. He could be called Aaron. Come on, yeah, Tom. You, 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 you James, literally, you? you can't, you can't have this argument. Your name is Tom. There are so many Toms. <laughs> the boy I went to school with. Yeah. Called Liam. <laughs> But we all called him Jamie because he looked like a Jamie. 
Right. <laughs> okay. That's my whole story. See, why is that? That's like another whole first impression situation going on. Imagine, imagine meeting a new group of people and saying, "Hi, I'm Anya," and they go, "They're like a Sharon." I'd be yeah. so annoyed. I do no. not look like a Sharon. But there you okay. go. That's like Sharon you... was just a name. That's it that's... could be a Kate. <laughs> But don't, that's another thing. Like when you first meet people, you're like your name doesn't suit you. Like I think you should. I think I thought you were more of like an Amelia or a. I don't know, oh, not not being personally right. Carol. <laughs> I thought you were saying Tom, you look like an Amelia, and I was like, I no, no, I was saying you look like got Carol. That before. <laughs> you could not do the Carol. You could pass for a Carol. I probably could, you know. I always think Carols have curly hair. Curly Carols. Curly Carols. Like curly kale. Yeah, like curly That's kale. Really yeah, you I see, see you see what I mean. Familiarity. That's just word association. I don't think you know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> if I go back to the, the psychologist who does know what oh, they're yes. saying. Oh yes, back back to back to the Doctor Smart Man. Oh, um. Then. So the next one is the number two. Fitness. And not in the not in the more modern. You but know, like sense exercise of fitness, sense. like as in. Um, health, like your your fitness yeah. and your health kind of thing. So apparently, they're under lo- that. Apparently, we that was very loud. Did you see that one? I feel like I, I saw that one. I felt yeah. like my computer screen lit so this, up. This might light up this area. Yeah, I think it did. I, I can't be honest, but um, I didn't see it. I was looking at you. I was too intently looking at you, trying to you're learn. You're interesting, interested mm. in the whole fitness of a face. I thought you were going to call yourself your interesting co-host, and I said, let's not push it. Well, you know, I am quite interesting, and you get to know Boo, me after the I, first impression. I've um, lived with you for a year. I got to know you pretty well. And uh, am I boring? Yes. <laughs> great, yes. great stuff. Thanks. Tom. We once moved. We once swapped Anya's photos in her, in oh, her bedroom. Oh, don't do this. With, with one of our roommates it was and so she annoying. kicked off it was so something annoying. so rotten did that light up my face but um, i feel like it did i kicked off was... something so rotten what do you, you mean? kicked off rotten I kicked you were off in rotten. such a sour mood i was so annoyed at you oh my good lord Look, i just had a really bad day and i come <laughs> home and these boys because you were being boys we were having fun. Swapped all of my photos not that I had very let's not let's well not a, l- play. a lot. It must have been four <laughs> photos. <laughs> they swapped them with another person's photos in their room, and it annoyed me to no ends. I was just, you know, when you just had like it was great. It bad was news so class. after bad news, and it's just building on top. And this was the cherry on the cake, and I was like, nope. No, Imagine my flipping top your has lid blown. because someone <laughs> changed some photos in your room. Oh, so Imagine annoying. almost burning the house down because someone moved some photos. Almost burn the house down, Tom. And you ran down with a knife and said, Who changed my photos? No, I just screamed at you. I screamed yeah. at you to come upstairs and change it. <laughs> oh, I was annoyed. Don't but prank Anya because she doesn't understand the funny side. It's not funny. It's just she doesn't get irritating. Irritate. Um, anyway, people judge people off of the fitness of their face. And one thing in particular, which probably we don't really think about, it's just all in our minds. We judge people on the symmetry of their face. I think I've heard this before. I've heard that. Yeah, which is But what does the fitness crazy. of their face mean? Like how attractive you think someone's face is, like in terms no. of the features so of So it's not a health face. thing? Well, it kind of is a you health go, thing. Oh, their face isn't very fit. They might have a double chin. It's a health thing a because apparently facial symmetry and proportions are signals of genetic diversity. So basically, mm. inbreeding increases the likelihood of genetic diseases and a strong immune system is capable of fighting off disease. And apparently mm. the way that your face, like if your face is more symmetrical, it means that you have less genetic impairments, which I didn't know until now. And I don't really know how, how that works. How symmetrical is my face? I don't know, you have to come a bit closer. It's so, yeah, I, I don't think it's like definitely symmetrical. You don't think it's too dissimilar? Well, you kind of have to go, oh, do you know what, you can't really do it. Have you ever seen um that filter where you can do the symmetry of your face oh, and it just oh. picks up one side and then it mirrors it on the other side? And it's scary, like I definitely think this side of my face is better looking than that side of my face. So when you put that oh, side... Oh, so you've got a better that, side. 
yeah, I think everyone's got a better side, unless your face is symmetrical, but... I've... Did you get told you had a better side of your face? No, I just know that I've you got just, a better side. Because I, I don't know which is my better side. I'd say possibly this one, because it's got a little, little freck. And that makes it better, does it? That makes it more interesting. Interesting. Than that side. So when when you take a photo of somebody, do you, like, care which side The rarity side of me on? having a photo taken is... <laughs> Do you, think you need to up your stand Instagram wherever's game. Easiest. I'll stand wherever is easiest. See, I will always stand on the right if I can. Is that weird? I missed that because you froze on my side. Oh, and you're now. You'll always stand on, on what my side? side? Yeah, you're. Am I? Me. Yeah. Good. Should we just carry on? Okay. Yeah. I always carry on. Yeah, yeah. Just assume it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will always stand. How much am I lagging? A lot. On on the video or on the audio? So that's only just come through now. Hmm. Because I think this could be a bit tricky to finish the no, podcast. No, you're back. You're oh. back. You're back. You're back. I'm back. You're back. You're back. You're back. It's caught up. It's caught up. Okay, I Punched will. Punch my microphone. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I will always stand on the right side if I'm taking a picture. Like as in, okay. like if there's a if there's a three people that want to photo together as a three, I will always try <laughs> and stand on the right and be this side of my face instead of this side of my face. I wonder if they said that's their favorite side. Yeah, that's happened before, and I go, no, it's my favorite side. I've actually had it before. So you know my friend Laura Osborne. I do. We both have the same favorite side, and we actually argue over who stands on that side. So what we do is we just switch halfway through, and you'll see on our Instagrams we'll have the same pictures, but of us on different sides, because we've then swapped and then posted the That's photo wild. of us on our right sides. That's why the that lengths I to... go through to get my just best stand there side. for a photo, smile, and then move on. But at least I know. Then, so then when I'm making, to, do you do sideways photos like this? Oh yeah, hundred percent sideways like this. So you wouldn't just stand there like. I mean, sometimes I do stand there like that. But if I take a selfie, because if you stand be forward like, like this, that. you stand like this. It doesn't matter which side's showing. Well, it well it kind of does. You look better if it's just like that, rather than. I've also realised that this is shocking content for. <laughs> The actual podcast is weird. That's like, fine. Like this. Do something this. good with the editing, Anya. <laughs> Great fun. But anyway, yeah, that's that. People judge people on their facial symmetry, and apparently, healthy people look attractive. That's no shock to anyone, is it? Um, when people look healthy, we also assume that they're likable, intelligent, and capable. <laughs> Tom, maybe, maybe, maybe you're facing that. Great, hun. Oh wow. <laughs> What are you capable of? I've never been are more you capable? so capable. <laughs> the fireworks are back. <laughs> An awful time to celebrate with these fireworks. Yeah, they agree with me. See them. You can't even see them, man. That's so heartbreaking. You can't see them. I can definitely hear them. You though. can't. Oh, I can right. see them. They're still looking great. No, oh, they stopped. Why did I bother getting my phone out? Stop it. And I can't believe you said my face isn't that great. I was joking. You See, were you not, say that I can't I take offended. a joke. You can't take a joke. Oh, Anya, there's a difference between moving someone's <laughs> photos and calling someone clapped. That's two very different things. I did not say that. I just said you're not capable. And maybe there's a reason. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. I'm not a nice person. Clearly, <laughs> this is why I didn't didn't engage in conversation. The first time we met, first impressions never wrong. Listen first to your impressions instincts. Is, you'll probably slag me off in four years. <laughs> four Call years. me munted. Oh yeah, it has no. It's been five years. Come on. Well, now. I don't know when we had that first conversation, Anya. You? Intelligent. I don't really I understand d- how healthiness can mean in your face. Like the attractiveness on, of your face can mean that you're healthier, more intelligent and more capable because i've met some very un- un- incapable men that have been very attractive You're but they say are unattra- incapable oh. but i think it's because what does when capable mean then like when someone's not capable <laughs> oh, of <laughs> what <laughs> like of just doing life like as in they don't do their laundry they don't cook 
they don't clean they don't exercise they're just lazy lazy i think incapable lazy attractive people because they they've just because they've been attractive people treat them better which is wrong shouldn't treat someone better just because they're more attractive but like i just think that girls like mother them and then they just do everything for them and and they just end up being so capable. you look f- you look for a guy who can cook yeah it's nice Either attribute. here first lads if you want to impress Annie, you've got to be able to cook Anya's taken right now and can he cook just oh <laughs> wow okay lad you heard it here first don't need to be able to cook just yeah. have to be good looking. You just... <laughs> there, there you have it. Well, I can't say that my boyfriend's not good looking. He's capable and good looking. There you go. Got the but whole he's not package. capable. You just said he can't cook. He can just about cook. Can he clean? He can clean. Because I'm not going to clean everything for him, Tom. So he's had I to learn. I bet you clean for him. Mm-mm, not at all. We we'll share. We'll get on next week's podcast. All right. We share. Okay. We share. We roles. share the cleaning. We sh- we do. We're equal partners, as people should be with their relationships. In their That's relationships, beautiful. you're welcome. So the last one, Tom, is emotional resemblance. Now I read this and I was like, "What the bloody hell does that mean?" And it basically means we're very good at reading the emotional expressions of other people. So we're really good at basically detecting if someone's eyebrows are lower, it means that they're stressed. Um, like you know if you can tell very much by the corners of someone's lips <laughs> um like i just don't think like your eyebrows and your lips i think and your eyes as well all of those things they're very easy to they portray emotions they they kind of go against us like even if we want to seem really happy in front of people you can smile but your eyes can still look sad you know no it's because you don't pay attention to people tom don't. I check they've got a face and I don't check the emotion. <laughs> go, that's a face they've got. Mm-hmm. Time to move on. Good. Well, I'm glad you're paying attention and to people's first impressions. They could be really trying, Tom. I really tried with you, and you didn't I even. Didn't. You didn't that even. Was half-hearted. It was so half-hearted. I bet you said, "Oh, hey, Tom." I said, "Oh, hey, you." No, you I did didn't... not say "hey, you." You just I rolled your eyes you and right. took out your headphones like God. Smashed my phone on the floor. Why am I even wasting my time here? I walked back home and I was like, uni's off today. So the hell am I walking with her? My day's already been ruined. <laughs> great. I bet it was a long day and I was like, oh god, I don't want to do this. Off to a great start. <laughs> Tom. I genuinely can't remember that first impression, but I'm sure you're misquoting it. Oh, it's all my fault. Yeah. Makes sense, doesn't it? I'm sure you're misquoting it. So I'm actually I really very wish, friendly. really wish we could go back in time and see see what we were actually like that would have been fun <laughs> so tom so, we um, asked the lovely people that listen to this podcast oh well, the tune squad and the kids on mm. instagram at we are audio box if they have any great first impression stories and i promise you tom they pulled through some oh, of these nice. stories i read them and some i some i lulled at some i cringed at but mostly... Do you say lol in person? Or do you just text it? Just text it. I just wanted to say lol in the podcast. And I just just kind of came out, didn't it? But I did lol a lip. Are you cringing for me saying lol mm. out loud? Yeah. Mm. I lol did it. And... <laughs> and I think you're going to lol it too, Tom. So, we're going to start off... I'm going to sit with a very straight face. Just for a poll. I've got, I've got four, but I think that might be too many. How many do you want? I want three. Three? Three are the best. I'll take all four in it. I'm not fussy. All right, well, maybe I'll just, just read all four and them. then we'll just... We'll just, just don't um, number them. We'll and just, just don't say we've got four. No, and then we'll just choose which one is the best one, the one that gets the best reaction out of you. So this, this one... They're all going to get this reaction. That's not very nice of you. You just said that you're a nice person, but that's not a very nice reaction, is it? Hmm? I don't show empathy well. Inside, I'll be like, oh, 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 I've been there. But on my surface, I'll be like, I see. Emma, I'm sorry to hear that. It's not Emma. It's Jake. We're starting off with Jake. That's going to be my second guess. Oh, stupid. 
So this is um this is a good one. This this one is from Jake. He said I had met my ex girlfriend's parents, but the first time we'd actually had any real interaction was Thanksgiving Day about ten years ago when I was a guest at their family dinner and at her sister's house. There was something wrong with the light in the oven, and her sister was complaining about it, trying to be manly and helpful. I mean, firstly, you shouldn't really be saying that you you want to be manly. You just want to be helpful, Jake. Just help a helpful, lovely person. Um, I flipped a switch on top of the oven and her sister started screaming. I had accidentally turned the oven onto self-clean mode with the turkey still inside it. <laughs> Apparently... <Fancy oven. laughs> apparently once turned on it's impossible to turn self-clean mode off on an electric oven (laughs) good stuff they're really celebrating hard tonight aren't they at least someone's having fun (laughs) at least someone's having fun I can't really what are you doing? Can you close your curtains? I was going to try and open them more so you could see them, but then they stopped. Uh, anyway, as you were saying. As I was saying, apparently once turned on, it's impossible to turn self-clean mode off on an Nothing electric oven. Impossible. <laughs> what do you do? Here with Nothing a hammer? Impossible. Yeah, but that's worse. It's money. This Surely is supposed it's not going to lock in the turkey. <laughs> well, it's, apparently it says this is supposed to be a safety feature as the oven... Goes to maximum heat for a few hours to burn off all grease and gunk inside, but you're not supposed to turn self mode on when Thanksgiving dinner is in the oven. Well, obviously, Jake, her father had to disconnect the power to the entire kitchen and we had to disassemble the oven with a screwdriver. Dinner was about two hours late. The parents were cool about it, except for the endless laughing and non stop jokes. That's good. They took it well then. Yeah, to be fair, I don't think that's the worst first impression ever. As long as dinner wasn't ruined. And plus, it was an accident. And it was was an accident. You know, he was just trying to be helpful. If anything, that's a good icebreaker. He just didn't want to be there. (laughs) It's a good icebreaker. There's nothing more uncomfortable than meeting parents. That's probably like one of the hardest first impressions. Boyfriend, girlfriend, best friends, newest friends. You've met my parents, though. I have. Was that embarrassing? No, because your parents are very nice. Oh, see, that's not that bad. And they're quite friendly from from the go. What about your... Some people people are quite... You have to, like, warm towards them. What about your girlfriend's parents? Um, So she lives with her mum and her grandparents. Yeah. And grandparents are even harder to, like, find mutual ground with. You think? I think grandparents are easier. I think so, too. I think they're harder. Yeah, but um, yeah, I got well with them. That's good Cause then. I'm a nice guy, because <laughs> they didn't approach me. I was walking to uni, <laughs> listening to my music, and I was like, "What?" But well, now I um, know I will never approach anybody walking along. Just, just listening never to approach music. me. I just, just won't. never approach me. Never again. Tom. Um, yeah, it's it's always embarrassing, especially when. So I found this growing up is a handshake. Men men shake hands, mm-hmm. and oh. Men shake hands, and um, I never know how much how much pressure to add in a handshake. Mm. And I was once shaking um, one of my girlfriend's, one of my girlfriend's, my ex girlfriend's <laughs> uncle's hand. <laughs> it's the other one. Yeah. <laughs> her, her uncle's hand, uh-huh. and he said, "Oh, that's a weak handshake, Tom." And I was like, "I'm so embarrassed." Oh no! In front that's of the whole family, I was like, I'm nice. so embarrassed. Oh. No, it wasn't. It wasn't great. Oh, Tom! Can't yeah, run that- with that. That's horrible. I don't think I don't think if someone's got a weak handshake, I don't think you should. Don't, don't call should, it out. I don't even think you should. If someone's got a good firm grip on a handshake, I don't think you should be like, "That's a great handshake." Or that, that's, that's a hearty a, handshake. That's either. a firm heart handshake. You know, I just think it should just be left. Otherwise, you well, overthink you know, it. Like, oh god, did I just break his little finger? Do you know Dobson from Urge to Splurge, the brand new podcast made I by do, Audiobooks? I do. Yes. He's got a very weak handshake. <laughs> That's not nice and it is, of you. it is spoken about regularly. Why have you shaken his hand? I don't. I haven't. Oh, who said it then? Oh, this is horrible. This has been spread now. It's a rumour. Or well, it could be true. It's not a rumour. It's not it's, a rumour. It's just gossip. He also, the first time he met my girlfriend, he shook her hand. 
Why? That's a solid question. I don't think when Matt Dobson met me for the first time, I don't think he shook my hand. To be fair, I'm a hugger, though. I think I probably went in with a hug before he could go in with a handshake. Well, I think my girlfriend just appeared and was like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Tom's girlfriend. And I think he just went, oh, hi, nice to meet you, and shook her hand. Interesting. And, and then she said, that was really weird. I was like, I hate, I hate shaking hands. So do I, because you don't know how much pressure to use. Yeah, and sometimes you're not ready to shake someone's hand, and you're like, oh, don't know. And just, you overthink it, like, where if your hands been? Handshakes are the worst. Handshakes are the worst. Because don't of COVID, it it's one good thing about it. I don't think we're ever going to shake hands again. I think it'll be the elbow touch, which is cringe, but I prefer it. It was someone's last day at work recently during COVID. Yeah. And I shook his hand to say, oh, good luck with the future. And then we both said, it's nothing personal. And then we both put hand sanitizer on our hands. <laughs> So it went like this. It went, nice to meet you. It's nothing personal, I guess. <laughs> and it was all, it was luckily we both did it. Yeah, because that would have been awkward if you did it. I was going to walk just out of eyesight. I was going to walk away so he couldn't see me and then. Do it. But um, he did it as well. So I was like, okay, cool. We're in a mutual agreement of it's important to keep your hands so clean. Interesting. Yeah, hands, water. face, space. I just would have done um, a little elbow tap and then, you know. Or maybe a fist bump. A fist bump's cooler than an elbow tap. Surely same thing. Really? No. Well, it's probably more. There's more germs. Because how often knuckles. are you picking things up with your elbow? Well, you don't know, Tom, what I do in my pastimes. I might pick everything up with my elbows. Yeah, it's a great skill to Very have. Very inefficient. Really, really handy. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else? Is it just Jake today or have we got another one? We've got one from Kelly. <laughs> So Kelly says, um, the first time I met my fiance's parents, they offered me a lollipop. My, this is a, a cold lollipop, an ice lolly. My tongue got stuck oh, so to not it. not a lollipop. <clears throat> well, um, I don't know, potato, potato. My tongue got no, stuck to it. No, no, it's not. <laughs> okay, whatever. And his dad had to baste my face with warm water using a turkey baster to get it unstuck i was drooling everywhere and couldn't talk it was extremely painful (laughs) that is awkward i've never had something like that before (laughs) you look deeply uncomfortable but why did why did the dad baste her face yeah it's true what about your fiance's why couldn't you've done it also, what confuses me, Kelly, is the first time I met my fiance's parents. Oh, how is this how is this... being engaged? Exactly that. That Kelly, is open up. interesting. Do you know what? It's probably karma, isn't it? She's probably been avoiding them for so many years, and then this is the first time, and karma's come kind of her on the bum and given her mm. awkward times. You know. But why? Why are you not going? Oh, let me help you out here. Yeah, it's true. Like, like going, Dad, can you fix this? Cheers. Yeah, you'd step in, right? And be like, it's you fine, we can, we can sort this out upstairs, let's go to the bathroom. You know, not yeah. like, let's all be in the kitchen and my dad can do it. It's a bit so intimate. This, this is a nice story where it makes me look good. <laughs> um, me and my current girlfriend once went for a walk and she was wearing, we went to a nice meal mm. and she was wearing some nice shoes, but they absolutely wrecked her feet. Oh, that's so when sad. we got home, I was like, oh, she's blistered up. We, we washed her feet. And I did it myself and I didn't go, Dad, do you mind cleaning her feet? And I just, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you just don't do that kind of thing, do you? Like, no, your I mouth's think quite an intimate is the part. type of thing where yeah. you step in and go, actually, she's my issue here. I'll, she's I'll, help her out. <laughs> I'll deal with this one. I agree with you. I think I think that's a good idea. I think, Kelly, you might need to sack him off because that's red flags. <laughs> red flags. Okay, I've got this one from Sarah. Um, the only awkward first impression I gave was in year six. We all had to go in the front of our class and introduce ourselves. Halfway through my introduction to the class, my button on my shirt popped off and everyone got to see my bra. Being in year six, this is the first time that I wore a bra, so I was kind of embarrassed first day? about it. <laughs> in, yeah, first day. I was kind of embarrassed about wearing a bra in the first place, and having my bra on show to the whole class was mortifying. I twirled around to try and fix it whilst my teacher yelled out, Everyone close your eyes, whilst Sarah learns how to dress herself. Oh, that's that's, that's rude. Sad. That's really rude, isn't it? It's not your fault. You can fault. say close your eyes. 
The teacher say close your eyes, <laughs> and that's quite a nice thing to do. But yeah, don't but say, don't you because think because this that... person is now to dress themselves? Exactly. That's so savage. And also, I just think that's that's just that's just. I don't think you need to like put more attention on it. You know, some no, people might not even be listening. I think in those situations when you have to introduce yourself and like go round the room, I think everyone's so focused on having to introduce themselves and waiting for their turn, you don't really listen to anyone else. You're just kind of thinking about you. What do I say? What do, what I, do I, say? I say? Exactly. And then yeah, saying like it's like oh, don't look at don't look over there for a minute. You're obviously gonna look, you know, mm. when someone's like oh look at that person, but don't look right now. It's like oh now. I'm basically this telling one? you to push that big red button. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's mean. And my last one is from Jonathan, Tom. Big Jonathan Tom. says, so we were late introducing my girlfriend to my family at my parents' house across town. We what were does fris- that mean? We were late to introduce her? I don't know. Maybe it means like they he hadn't introduced her. They've been dating for ages and he hasn't okay. introduced her. I don't know. Oh, and then he goes on to say we were frisky beforehand, so maybe they were just late to um, getting to the place because they were having fun times. Um, and ended up being almost an hour late. We were teased upon arrival with, what were you two doing? Well, my dog and my sister's dog, okay, so he's brought a dog to the house, started wrestling in the living room. Then a few minutes later, my dog starts heaving in front of everyone. For some reason, my little sister examines the puke pile and pulls out puke the piles condom. Are d- delightful s- okay. <laughs> it's getting worse and worse. A scream from my sister and a, oh my God, it's a condom, followed by actual rolling on the floor laughing from my sisters and a stern look from my parents. To me, this has to be one of the most awkward first impressions ever. So I think what he's saying is his dog ate the condom that they had used having fun before they came to their parents' house. And Why did he bring it with him? <laughs> well, I don't think he realised that the dog had eaten the condom. Oh. And then the dog comes round and, you know, that the condom's not good for an animal <laughs> anyone oh, to gosh, eat. imagine that, no. And he threw it up in front of everyone. So, yeah. That's embarrassing. Yeah. That is embarrassing. That's awful. Yeah, oh, Jonathan! You can't, recover, you can't recover from that. Gonna find new family, pal. I mean, I think it's you know, if you're if you're an, if you're of age and you've been dating somebody for a while and it's consensual and having fun, then you know, I think parents are gonna know that you're having great times together. I but can get a new family. <laughs> I think um, it's probably a good thing to keep the um, objects of the fun times away from family members. I can you know. Listen. Yeah. I do know. That is awful. But, you know, great. it made a great story. And um, I hope you've recovered from it, Jonathan. <laughs> I hope what? he has. I hope he has recovered from it, because that's awful. It's not good. Not good at all. But it's those, not ideal. Those are, these are all the stories that we... Well, we got a few more, but those are my favourites. Did you have any embarrassing first impressions? Like, embar- introduce yourself to someone and go, oh, I wish I didn't say that. I think I've, like, stumbled on my words, but I don't think... I, I don't have any, like major first impressions in my life where I'm like oh my god I'll never get over this have you? I must have done I've I've introduced myself to so many people and I'm <laughs> Mr. Socially Awkward yeah but so that's this definitely... is what I mean like it's probably not like a full on story like those were it's probably just so, a, I said my name wrong or a lot of the know. time so when I was in third year of university lots of people just assumed I was gay from looks wise for some reason and then one of my I housemates... I didn't, by the way, first impression. One, one of my housemates um, noticed a lot of... My chair may be breaking. A lot <laughs> of people would, in, would, would just assume would just assume I was gay. And so he would go, this is Tom, looks gay, isn't gay. <laughs> so that was a lot of my first impressions at uni. That's just so, so awkward. Like, what it, does, it does what, make things why, a lot more And also, more why awkward. does it matter? Like, come on. Like, well, it was him. <clears throat> It was just that that type of character, but it wasn't ideal. So I had that often. That Maybe he just there. wanted to set you up with girls, but then you had a girlfriend all the way through uni, so... Cheers, fella. <laughs> I don't know. There are better ways to to wingman than doing that. Mm. But I, I've, had, I've had many a, many an awkward interaction with someone. But you know what? It's probably gonna, it's bound to happen at some point in my life that I'll, complete, I'll completely do a, I don't know... 
fool around myself and a have foolery. A, a foolery. I'll I'll look a fool in front of someone, and if I ever do, I will let you guys know about my awful future first impression with someone. Because you know, there's many more to come. Hopefully, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. Then you'll embarrass yourself in the future. Yeah, I can't join wait. me. One of us. One of us. Anyway, Tom, um, I think that's enough from you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's it for this week's episode. Whoa, croaky voice. Oh, you just um, exhausted yourself in this oh hour recording. Very exhausting. That that's us from us, Tom. I that's think. us from us. That's that's it from us, Tom. What do you reckon? That's us from us. <laughs> it's been real. It's been real. Well, thank you very much, Tune Squatters, for listening to us ramble on again. Thanks, for another kids. Great uh, uh, Tune Squatters for another great episode. <laughs> And if you're watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. If you're listening or even watching, who cares? Um, share our podcast with a friend. Please. Share it. Tag us. It, it say really hey. Helps us. These guys are pretty dope. Yeah. Or at least say hey. Tom's pretty dope. Hannah's. <laughs> eh, she's there. And um, share it with a friend because it does help and it does mean the world to us when you share it with your friends. It really, really does. Like honestly, really it makes really it makes our little days, doesn't it, Tom? Our little our little makes days are a bit Our little brighter. days. It makes our little days. <laughs> but um, thank you very much for watching or listening. listening, whatever medium you're on. Do follow us on Twitter at We Are Audio Box. We're also and on Instagram. Thank you. Hey, maybe maybe hold your horses. <laughs> All right, reel that neck back in <laughs> because we're also on Instagram. <laughs> we're also on Instagram. Oh my God. <laughs> At we are audio box the same same handle as we are on twitter say hi give us a follow give us a like give us a retweet and we'll be back next week with another great episode see you later tune squatters bye kids Bye-bye.